started. We're going to start on our tummies and uh, with our head, our palms like this, like we're, 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 uh, we've done before and the forehead, just make sure that it's a comfortable, you're not on the edge on your brow bone, it's slightly up so you really get a sense of, of uh, a relief and nice gentle pressure there. So just get down. Ah, ha, ha. Let your body drop into the mat. Adjust where you need to adjust to make it feel good for you. And again, if this head to the hand um, placement doesn't work for any reason, whether you know a larger chest or different length of neck, then adjust. Put your head right on the mat if that feels better, or use your prop. Okay. You just don't want you. <laughs> You don't want your nose getting squished on the on the mat. Okay, that's the thing in a nice natural curve z through the spine. Complete release and unzipping of the back of the body. Closing eyes, settling in, reconnecting, turning and tuning in. Maybe even having this sense of, of initiating our, our connection, all of us together, united by our breath and uh, our intention really to just be creative, have fun, hang out in our vessel, explore that inner landscape. And maybe along the way, we'll build some strength, get some heat on, which we will right at the top of our practice. <laughs> And just basically embody. So let's just take a little pause to bring our attention, awareness, focus, sense, whatever works for you to the back of the body from the back of the head at the occiput all the way down the spine, or you can start at the feet and all the way up. But generally when we're addressing it, I would suggest going down the body, have this soft, just notice how sort of soft allowing it is, how the, especially you might kind of hang out at the hips and the buttocks and notice it's almost this sense of a real deep spreading because we're gonna change that <laughs> right now, so. Move now as from the back of the hips through the glutes down into the pubic bone at the front of our body and start to just kind of give a little bit of a pressure down through there without squeezing your bum cheeks together. Just anchor down a little bit more. You'll feel some interesting things happen. We'll lift the head from the hands or whatever prop it's on. Take the hands out and put them on the, on the mat at the cactus like goalposts. You choose how far, okay, but comfortable. Head is up for the moment and we'll just... Do a little bit of neck work. So as we exhale, open the left ear to the mat and drop down. When we inhale, bring the hands up with the neck and come center. Go to the other side, exhale in the arms and the right side of the head down. Inhale, drift back to center, shoulder blades to the spine and exhale to the right. Inhale fully, float, exhale towards the left, right ear to the mat. Inhale and exhale to the right. Let the hands drift down. Inhale and exhale to the left. Mm. And inhale, stay up here. Send these arms now down the body, flipping them. So the backs of the hands face the ground and keep extending these arms until you feel the arm bones themselves and the joints sort of open and even on both sides. And you know you sort of got it when you feel a stretch across the top of the shoulders, like the shoulder caps are indeed moving away from the side of the neck. Your lower back is starting to give a little sing. So we've noticed the difference here of when we were uh, observing that softness in the body and now we're bringing this heat to the back body, especially the lower back. Now start to bring your glutes in a little bit. Instead of squeezing your bum cheeks together to shorten them, press that pubic bone down, 
get a little higher. We'll bring the hands higher from the ground. So up behind us and see if you can bind them behind, sort of at your sacrum or behind your bum. You might need or like to have your elbows bent. It'll make it easier. If you want, you can have straight elbow, straight arms and then take that bind away from the seat, developing a really nice opening for the upper chest, okay? So now we move the work. The back is doing the strengthening. The upper chest is opening. The upper arms are releasing out of the joints in a healthy manner. Just stay here. I know it's work for the back, but it's really good work. And then let go of your bind, however it was. Keep the hands. Go back to this modified locust. Now take the legs from the mat. Add the arms, sweeping them back up like a <laughs> superman. I can't do it without laughing. Okay, and just resist the urge to start to lead the posture with the chin. Just get a nice long back of the neck, letting that work in the lower back. It's radiating. Think of a sunburst, okay? Really get used to that because we're going to do the work all the way around. So here's the back body. Stay with me if you can. You can always lower the legs. And then indeed, we will lower the legs, bring the hands back and bring them under the shoulders. Don't do anything else though. We're coming to our right side. So shift over to the right side, flexing the ankles. So the feet start to like we're standing on them. We're coming to the right side. Left hand supports us if you want. Just take your little micro movements to set yourself up. Remember, try to have the whole right arm plus the hand down. Okay, up. So now we're moving to the work on the right waist. It's not super high. Even just manipulate yourself, feel your waist, the light, the height, the ribs on both sides, that even. When you feel, move the energy down the inside of the legs, like you're trying to reach the ground with the ball of each foot. If you need help, you can just come down or put your left foot on the mat. Let's stack this left arm up, creating this optimal space from ground to fingertips. And just breathe, now feel. The radiating that we had in our lower back, start to be comfortable what's happening on the sideways. Stay here if you want. Remember, you can come down with your hips if you need to, or take this right arm above and actively open up the right ribs, the left ribs. So it's the left arm over top and arc, squeezing the right waist into the body. And then reset, come back down, don't flump. Come over and to the do it on the other side. So create the shape, flexing the ankles, elbow beneath the shoulder, flag up, do it, progress slowly, richly, nourish it, refine it. So really lengthen down the inside of both legs. You'll feel what happens. Focus on the intensity on the left waist now. If you want, follow with me, take the arm above, maybe keep it that way. We've extended that, the length of the pose so it becomes far more challenging or start to expose the side ribs to the sky, closing up the left ribs into the body. Breathing as we do it, being patient and then come back up for the hips down. Again, no flumping, come back over. We're on our tummies, just reset. Bring the elbows now beneath the shoulders, both of them, palms radius coming right out from the elbows. Toes under, lift to the kneecaps. So everything's off, so forearms, kneecaps, under toes. Plug the belly up, so really draw it in and notice the stillness in the hips. So nothing else moves. We're not tilting the hips just because we're engaging the core. So we've gone back, sides, we're going to the front. If you want more, take those legs from the mat and refine it. So trying to fill the back body, it's there for the ride. You know, it's like, why does this image come? This, it's the Grinch with the little doggy on the sleigh and he looks back and the dog is like waving at him because he's not running, pulling the sleigh. That's your back. It's just how long for the ride. And all the front is doing the support work, having a conversation with gravity being patient, you need more, you take your legs farther away. Always know the farther the legs go away from the core, that navel, the more challenging postures will be. Stay with it, back to the arms, everything's singing. I know it's turbo practice, okay. And then lower down, let the hips come down, release the feet. 
take a moment to let the thigh muscles soften. And now we're going to develop the three pointer back bends to release here. So first is it's sister pose sphinx. Press the forearms and the hands down, lift the chest up and really absorb those shoulders into the body. The shoulder blades are gonna be sliding down the back. Try to make that happen. The more you can stretch the chest up and isolate the stiff part of us, right? The rib cage there for a reason. The, uh, more it will resonate. Okay. And then soften down, <clears throat> forehead to the mat, just relax the back of the neck here. It's an opportunity in case we were overdoing there. Slide the hands back beneath the shoulders. We're going now to Cobra. Elbows <clears throat> place back. Let's go. Anchor through the pubic bone and start to develop the back bend from, <clears throat> excuse me, down up. Elbows in, chest broad. Doesn't have to be your deepest one. And you'll see people do Cobra with straight arms, but holy mac, that's <clears throat> usually the shoulders will just have to collapse for that to happen. <clears throat> I don't know, I have a grenouille on my gosh. Okay, now with me, lift our hips up and just come to our knees and we'll just turn the toes under, okay? Come back down and just inch a little bit forward. Okay, flip back. So toes under, inch forward. So the shoulders are right over. Release the feet, strengthen the legs, push away from the ground. And you can just stay like that on, on this weird looking plank or start to open the chest once again, absorb the shoulder blades down the spine. Take your upward dog. Breathe through that intensity. This is thick. And then soften the knees, let go. Let the hips come back. Turn the toes under for a counter pose. Keep the hips above the knees and just stretch these arms out for a moment for puppy pose. Releasing the underarms that pulling up. So in those back bends, we tend to close the energy pattern off on the, in the underside of that joint, which is the underarms. So here, just kind of counter that. And then slide the hands back or bring the knees together. Toes are still curled under. It's going to take that opportunity to open up the feet by bringing the weight over the heels for a moment, taking the arms down by the side, releasing the shoulder caps away from the neck. Breathe here. Bring the arms up, elbows, shoulder height, palms together. We've done it. This is for the fascia work in the upper back. So here we go. Press the hands, develop that strength in the dome of the ribs of the rib cage, and then bring the forearms together. Oh, and then release that. Press. Forearms together and then release that. Press, engage, and release in towards one another. Release, inhale, take that pressure off. Two more of those. Press, release. Yeah. Don't you feel that? <laughs> Press, release. And the feet are screaming. And, and welcome, Wendy. And up. And we'll counter pose one more time for those feet. Flip them. Come back down. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't want to hit my head on the. Find the mat with the hands. Let your bottom sink into the heels if you can. This may be enough for the hip flexors, okay? And for the feet. Otherwise, press the feet down, start to raise the hips away, stretch open the upper chest, and then, oh, my head's going to hit my. And just try to bring your head back, not hit your desk or your coffee table. Eww. And come down, peel those hands away. Just get that, take the opportunity. Instead of lifting them away, peel them away. It feels way better. And plant them ahead of you and get up and find your downward dog. Just pedal it for a moment because we're going to come into a double knee bend. Keep the knees bent like you're going to plant them on the mat again. And this will give us the opportunity to release out of the overworking in the hamstrings. And if you're like I am, you don't need that. But let's just focus on the sitting bones. Bring a scoop, like pull your belly in and scoop your tailbone and you can feel the, the sitting bones looking to the floor sort of. And then do the opposite where you're sticking your bum so high, the sitting bones are laser beaming the wall up towards the ceiling. That's too high. Can you find something in middle without curve in your lower back. Try to find that, pull the belly in to support the curves of the spine and the organs in the body. 
and start to stretch the legs out, seeking the ground, firing up his eyes. That means shorten them. Even pressure through the hands. And then let's, let's just take a gaze here. Okay, look up to your hands or your inner wrists for a moment. I know your neck is straining. And then look at your eyes of your elbow, the inner elbow creases. I don't want them looking forward at me and I don't want them looking at each other. Can you angle them so they're in line with your thumb line? That is actually anatomically should give a release and merely may help foster a singing downward dog. Okay, keep that arm like those arm placement and just float up to this high plank. Lower the knees, keep strong in the belly and strong in the arms and stretch back. It's not a soft arm, stay strong. Come back to plank. Fire up your thighs, feel that locking in, lock and load, exhale, hinge at the hips, drive it up, not from the shoulders, but from the hips. Good, let's go again with each other, inhaling to this high plank, tummy tugged up, smooth back, it's not a release. It's a lovely back body stretch. Come forward again, engaging, driving, drawing everything back to the party and exhale, bowing to ourselves and downward dog. That's it. Now, <clears throat> let's come down on our left shin. Keep the toes curled under of the left foot. Bring the right foot up into the outside edge. So you're gonna have to adjust this. I just mean, don't bring your right foot in between your hands. You're gonna have the, on the outside. Hands, the wrist creases are sort of in line with your heel, but you're gonna have to, again, no. Anchor this right foot. So it's going to have a tendency to leave the party and hang out, falling outwards. So we need to really find that lovely grip on the inside of that right foot, which will help bring the knee in alignment, which will make the hip do the work we want it to. Huh. Now, we're a bit short. I am, Lee. So I'm going to do my adjustments by totally taking my toes under and stretching my leg back until I start to feel it. I can straighten it off the floor refining the pose so that back heel draw it in right heel at the front pivot as if it's going to spiral inwards open and lift the chest visit the back of the neck that it's long and soft we're in lizard pose okay stay breathing with me lower that left knee Shift the weight into the left hand. Put the right hand on the right thigh and just take an angle opening of your left shoulder, allowing that gaze to come stay over that heart line. Plug the belly in. Good. And then undo hand. The right hand comes down. Hips release a little bit. So we can bring that right leg back. Adjust the hand placement. Mm. Don't go back into a counter pose. Left leg comes through just like we did. I, I get the hand placement, shoulder width apart, most likely. And really be aware of this release of this left knee out from your midline. Keep it working in like a magnet to your side body. And then start to play around with the depth, right? I'm just lifting and moving my leg back because we're going to be suspended here. So get that length and really send the energy through that back heel. And just visit all the corners of the feet. What is grounded? The palms, the feet. What's suspended? The chest. How's the neck? Wonderful. Good. That's it. And then lower the knee. Shift the weight. Put the left hand on the left knee and take the opportunity to create space in the front of the right shoulder. Plug the belly in, keep the gaze along the spine. So don't overdo is what I mean. And just experience maybe deep in the stretch of the left knee going forward a little bit. Maybe the inner hip right side starts to sing. Maybe it's about the organs being squeezed. And then undo that. Bring that hand back down. Soften the hips back. So that's important. Don't go from this already stretched spot. Just let the body release a little bit before we take our leg back. Stretch our hands forward. What are we creating? Downward dog. Take up space. Good. 
Okay, let's lift the right leg up and three point downward dog and just allow, allow, allow the lengthening in the back of the left leg. And then you can do those heel lifts, just learning, building the strength in that joint. The ankle tends to be really weak. Okay, get that height, neutral shoulders, neutral hips. On one of your highest heel lifts, bring that right knee, right foot through. Remember, if it doesn't get there, you just soften the knee and put it there, place it. Vinyasa is to place in a specific way. It does not mean throw our body around. Okay, now we're lunge. We're in this low lunge. Come right to the fingertips. So just grazing the ground, starting to work the hips and the legs, finding that deep connection. So we're, it's that root feels so heavy from navel down. And then go into the arrow lunge. So cradle the right leg. Elbows soften back, which enhances the opening and reminds us to lift our chest. Visit the back body, shoulder blades easing down. Find your alignment, right hip drawn in and back. Spread those feet down into the ground. Take the hands from the thigh and anchor them at the heart in Anjali Mudra. Keep the gaze point soft. And we're going to just turn the back foot, the left one to the mat on an angle. And do it slowly. We're going to slowly stretch that right leg, lean up and finish standing with straight legs, gazing over the heart line. Bring the hands up, separate them, having the sense of building the strength up the body, past the shoulders, right to the fingertips, and then bend this right leg. Modified warrior two, lifting the heel if you want more intensity and dropping the groin and creating more space all choices that you can make or that your body can tell you. Watch that knee, Gail. Like focus on creating space in that front of that right leg crease. Keep that heel up. Okay. Do you want intensity and turbo? Keep the heel up and go into your double hinge with your hands together. You want to take a little bit less intense, lower the heel, put your hand down and do pars rikanasana like this or modify, okay? If you want it turbo, you come in, up, you're in flight, everything is rooted, but flying. Very weird that you can be so grounded in it, so light. Okay, and then all of us, let's bring that right hand down and the right heel down if it isn't already. Just draw that big old circle with the left hand Oof. and reach down to the ground with that left hand. Allow the front body to be absorbed in and dome the back, let the crown drop. Stay here for a good breath or two. Soak up the benefits. Of it. And then pivot the back foot so it looks forward. Plant the right hand so it supports us. And lift up and back and find downward dog. Try not to do huge movements. Stay focused. Stay internal. Again, right knee comes down if you want to support or left leg comes up. Right, Do those pulses. Make them big and really worthwhile, not this butterfly. Okay, really rich work. And then at some point, bring that left leg through. Adjust your ground, your feet. Call in that left hip towards your groin. Come to your fingertips as we're adjusting. Because that will sort of give that internal message to the body to start to anchor us only through the feet because the hands are no longer going to help us because we need to bring our core into it as we take hold of our left thigh. Gently, mind you. Elbows back. Again, address anything in the upper chest. Keep it nice and full. Call shoulder blades appropriately away from your throat. Drift the hands to the heart. Recognize where this gaze is and slowly find the mat with the back foot. As we spiral open, press that left leg open and find ourselves in this straight leg. Bend that left knee. Keep long in both sides of the waist and then separate the hands and bring them up as if we're just reaching deep out of the hips themselves. And Lift this left heel. These are all options, okay? Deepen the posture by creating more space between that front knee and the back. Really strong foot with a very healthy arch. Keep it lifted or do your variation, whatever picked you picked 
or your body picked for you or your belly brain picked for you. Bring your hands together if you want. You can either go into flight, do it. This hinge, wherever you're hinging, hinge and allow. Very dynamic and you can see how you can amp it up or amp it down. Let go or bring your hand down to your thigh if it's not already there. Left heel comes back down. Take the opportunity to get some nice movement for the shoulder as we sweep it back around and down. Reach for the floor. And then pull your body in and let the back body stretch right through the crown. Pivot on that back foot, plant the hand to support and up and back down the dog. I think it's about time to get out of the hands and to get up to the top of the mat, don't you think? So let's do it. Let's go. Walk up to the top of the mat. And take a rag doll, holding the opposite elbow with the opposite hand and benefiting from this wonderful hang, dangle, inversion, yield. Legs are bent. and soak up this restorative, the nature of the head below the heart, everything soft, and then reclaim the footing. You may have started to lose connection, just focus on sending the energy down so we can just roll up pieces of this image of stacking the vertebrae in their natural curves. And the head will hang from the spine until we're ready to reset. In Tarasan, so the ears are actually over the shoulders and the arms are down by the side. Let's just do this little inquiry. So this is what happens. Kyphosis or hyperkyphosis is what we also call, unfortunately called the widow's hump, yuck. But it happens to a lot of us and there's a lot of, and the breathing gets compromised. So what happens? Can you, I don't know if you can see, but you can try it. My, my ears are forward of my shoulders. So I'm going to start to lengthen, really focus on my natural curves and height. It's called axial extension for the spine. You come into standing, you feel automatically the lungs have sort of released, being squeezed. The heart has space. And where are the ears? Right above the shoulders, because that's where the perfectly engineered spine and the weight of the head, the minute the weight of the head is supported by the spine. But if it comes forward, gravity takes hold of it and pulls it down and the spine has to do this to hold that 10 pound head up. Anyway, enough talking. Let's take our block for one more inquiry. Bear with me because it's, I think it's worthwhile addressing one more time. Take your block, don't worry if you don't have it. Take it as high up the end of side leg as you can muster. Look down at your standing feet. Allow the weight distribution to happen. It's always happening. You're never static. I mean, you look static to me, but you're not. And, uh, and now I want you to stick your bum out like, and create a more lordosis. That's lower back, right? Like a dog tilt, we go dog cat, okay? Stick. Did you feel your thigh muscles roll in on the block? So the block will shoot out behind you if, <laughs> if it could. Now, come back to Tadasan and do the opposite. So here's the pelvic tilt, reverse pelvic tilt. Okay, in cat pose, squeeze and tilt. Do you feel the, the, it's really fun. Do you feel the block about to projectile to the front and hit me on the screen? That is, see, and do you feel your bum cheek squeezed and you're like, okay. Just take a moment, go between those two extremes, right? With the block is just so handy to really feel and you get a nice massage for your adductors anyway. Um, back and forth until the movement becomes much more subtle. And you find that you have this gentle engagement in the front supporting in a nice, healthy manner and a very lovely spacing in your lower back. Having said that, keep the block there with that spacing and take a double lift and see if that changes things. Once you found your equilibrium, take your hands up, lift it, Urdhva Hastasin. Very columnal. Send those teals away. Don't let them go dog footed where they want to, but because they won't, because why? We have a neutral pelvis and we're squeezing the block in an even manner. That's it. Find the mat with the feet, keep the block and come into Utkatastan with the block. Actually, you might have to adjust it slightly, go lower. 
Sorry about that. I should have said that because it's too wide unless you have a wider stance. Now keeping the block, go to half stand with your block work. Ooh -hoo. Bring shoulder blades to the spine, back into Utkatasana with the arms reaching out of the hips in a very classic manner. And then come back up to Urdhva Hastasana with the feet down, bring the hands down behind, cradle the back of the hips, elbows to the back and take the opportunity for a really deep inhalation, sending the opening and the messages right up here. Whew. It's not a back bend we're doing this, right? It's just like a candy cane, nice and engaged and simply asking the release of the tension in the chest. And then let go, put the block down. Take a moment there. Well, okay. And then bring the feet together for Samastiti He. Tone up us together, hands at the heart, neutral pelvis. Rock back and forth. And we're just gonna soothe it out. Inhaling up. You can lift the chest, exhale, bring the palms together, unzip right down the form and plant the hands and allow the crown to soften. Inhale, peel up as high as you need to to get length and extension to the spine. And then a big old exhale, step back to plank. Take a nice breath in and plank, refining the posture. And then exhale, heels forward, knees down, bend at the elbows and just bring the chest towards the ground. Don't bring it all the way down. Inhale, straighten up, legs straighten up, and then back to downward dog. Up on the toes, step through, lift to lengthen, exhale to fold. I always give a slight bend, but it is actually just forward, standing forward, fold. Inhale, when you come to half, you can add the arms so they don't drag you out, sweep them back up, and then just bring them back down to the heart to finish. Good, inhaling up. Exhale, all the way down the midline. Let go. This is a tipping. Now engage and lengthen, pull the belly in, support the organs. Step back to plank. Take a breath to really find our place here. And then heels forward, let the shoulders come forward, knees down, chest forward, and just come towards a press. Doesn't matter, you can just think about doing it. And then straighten up, come back to plank, lift up, hinging at the hips. Just try to drive it with the hips and the legs, not the shoulders. Take another breath here. Good. And step through. Finish that exhale, releasing any residual staleness. Lift to the fingertips or higher. Take the forward fold. Make it feel good. Own that journey. Come halfway, fully all the way up, moving the space around us with our hand, bringing it all the way back down to the heart. Last one I'm going to add in. So inhaling. Hey, and exhale. Close it up and feed it down. Inhale, take that lengthen, reach, 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 and plant, support us with the hands and find that high plank. Inhale here, don't rush it, enjoy it. Exhale, heels forward, knees down, chest forward and down towards the ground. Then straighten up, legs, and then drive the hips up and back. And then we'll step through. Lift up, take your fold. Follow the breath as we come back up to stand. And down. Okay. <clears throat> so you may, I think I had the block at the top from where we were. Uh, we're going to be doing a balance. You probably don't need the block because we're going to go from Trikonasana. So I was going to suggest, unless you want to go into full flight, we're going balancing half moon. Stepping back with the left leg, create just a bit shorter. Okay, it's not quite as long as warrior. We all know that. Back hip is slightly forward and released. So we don't feel twinging in that inner right knee. Do whatever you need to do. I still love to just press myself back like this, really reminding me that it's a hinge. Adjust your footing. See, I'm getting my heel a bit back. Open this, the left ribs to the sky. 
reach down the inner leg on that right side, maybe bring the arm down, left arm up, create your own Trikonasana triangle, really becoming deeply acquainted with what it's like to, like we did in the opening, this is the reason why for that arm balance, this tethering, strengthening, come up. Sorry, you're releasing any tension in the hips there. And then start to create your balance. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Taking time to come back. Pivot. Step forward, stand. And go to the other side. Right leg steps back. Create Trikonasana on the left side. All the little checkpoint Charlies come down, adjust, refine, and color in, and be mindful of your neck that it's not dangling from your spine. It's not peering down at your right toes. It's a soft gaze, either up, I find that too much straight ahead, or you can do look down at your toes of the left foot. Girdling the waist and look down at the toes coming up. You can keep the arms out or bring them down while you progress into your balance, opened hip. Play around with it, nice. Okay, and just remember when you come down to control the descent, so we'll throw our bodies around, pivot. Stand tall, take a breath. And then we're gonna finish standing at the top of the mat. So at the short end of the mat and let's plant the right leg, bring the left leg up, plant our hands around the shin, just below the knee, bring it up. Dome the chest, so try not to feel dragged down towards the ground. You want to feel nice and long in the tummy from pubic bone to navel and navel to diaphragm. Let go of that leg. Slowly bring your hands out and take them up and see if that leg can stay as high as you had it when we were supporting it. Ha ha, it's hard work. Keep the leg up, we'll move the hands first if we can developing incredible balance. <laughs> Bend the right leg and you're going into that figure four from here. Hands have drifted down to the hips so we can really feel the neutral shape as we send the sitting bones and the hips back away from us. Chest stays full. If you want, you can put palm of your left hand open on the inside of your left knee to support that and encourage the opening while we Keep the hips not moving to the right. Keep the hips sort of traveling, if anything, towards the left side of your space. Keep hinging, refining. So I just noticed my chin was lifting because I'm actually trying to see you guys. And it was like, oh, oh I gotta, do, gotta change that. And then just as important as moving in, we progress out. Um, and down, don't say anything about that right leg. That's energy. Did you feel that? Now it starts to, and one's singing, and then they join the song, and then it's ready to move over. Okay, left leg roots, right leg lifts. Flex the ankle so it's not dangling, the foot's not dangling. Bring it up. Oh, this side's far tighter for me. Okay, keep it up. Hands leave, and stretch out of the ground. Really helps to bring a little smile, okay? Hands move down first and then you're gonna settle at the hips. Bend the left leg, cross the right one over just like we did and start to develop this figure four standing hip opener. And you know, you, there's so many um, creative spaces to move into with this, right? I mean, it's, it's a different posture, but you can even go all the way down and cradle this shin, but I wouldn't do that. Not with this sequence. 
And now imagine those hips kind of traveling to the right side of you, if anything, okay? They're gonna wanna go away to the left and leave you. And then bring that leg up. <laughs> bring the hands up. <laughs> bring that leg down. Mm hmm. Oh, the shins are saying hello, the calves, knee ankles. Okay. Open up the legs, turn the feet out. We're coming down to Malasan. So come down to a spot first, just to assess what's happening in the feet, what's happening in the chest. If you're coming to a spot where you feel that your trunk, your torso is parallel to the ground, it's usually a sign to stop, okay? That's a sign. And just play with the, the, the areas there, you know, lifting a little bit. But if you find that you can keep dropping and keep exploring down, it's not better or worse, it's just different. One is gonna be stronger, right? The lifted one, where you come down. This is a first chakra posture, if you've ever seen one. Number one also has something to do with number four. Less about number six. <laughs> okay. If you were up here, it's going to be easier. You have to reach for the ground. If you were down like I am, we may not look very elegant as we come down to the mat. Wrap our arms around the shins, tuck the chin in. And just sit for a moment. Oh, by the way, see if you can use this bind in this rahasya, this space to create space in the joint, the shoulders, each of them. So if you kind of hang back, what I'm hoping you'll get is this disengagement in the shoulders, kind of icky. It's very good. Because then you know what it is to engage. Up, take the right leg out, bring the heel of the left foot in, and the shin to look into the mat, if you can muster that. Let's sit tall for a moment and just open this right arm. Skyward, left arm up. Now, let's just try this together in, in a two-stager. I've just been working with it, might help. So you know what we did before, all this tethering stuff. So this is like Parjavikhanasana, just leaning over. You'll feel the left waist kind of give some feedback. Don't go farther than that when you lose the connection down the left side of the body, right? Now, can we all can try to look at your arm? If your arm's looking towards me, your shoulder's going to be rolling in. So try to get that nice, settled shoulder joint. And then begin not from the fingertips, but from the ribs. Start to open that up. Who cares where the arm goes? See if we can control that side of our body to initiate a bend. It's a side bend now from a hinge. Who cares about the arm, don't do it from the fingers or the wrist. Do it from the breathing muscles, offering up that side body. Maybe the waist will soften and lengthen to accommodate a deeper shape. Use that lower hand to encourage a spiral open for the upper side, soak it in. Maybe think the sun shining. And then come back up, do it from the ribs. Once we had set the arm in the socket of the shoulder, it doesn't move now. Straighten up and bring it down. It looks a little bit different, but I think it's a very interesting way of doing this seated opener. Left hand, now we switch sides. It's like I have chalk in here. Okay. Arm. Lengthen. And all we're doing is sort of growing the lines, they were down and we just extend it up. You can even hold your ribs. Nothing on that right side of the body should be opening and exposed. It's just hinging. So we're making the hips release us. The lower back is in play. That lower arm just is there, okay? For now, we're not gonna reach it. And then breathe open the ribs, slowly but surely as we inhale, offer it up. Enjoy the ride, spiral open and sink deeper if that suits. Try to keep anchored through both of your bum cheeks. 
Don't let yourself lift up towards that left foot. Keep connection. Soak it in. It should feel really rich. Be very present here. Oh, I don't know if you heard my spine. And then come up from here and down. Bring that left leg in. Now you can find cross-legged shape. I mean, usually you should kind of switch sides. I'm, I'm always, I always have the same one forward if I'm this, so I have to be very aware of that, but I'm doing that today. So let's, we're here seated in our version of Sakasana, easy pose. And just press into the leg. So we're gonna turn everything, our trunk, our heart line in line with that right thigh. And then exaggerate your root through your left sitting bone because that's where you're gonna go. Don't do that. Okay, tense the fingers if you like. If you find you can reach the floor with the open palm, do that. Put a little more pressure in the right hand to encourage this length over this angled right thigh. And again, this is one soak up where you wanna go. Sometimes a complete softening with the arms outstretched might feel really good. Or you wanna keep it more on an angle, a little higher, working the foundation where the sitting bones are. Whatever it is, make it thick. Feel it in your lower back on the left side. And then come up. Don't rush it, but we will do the other side. Come over to the other side again. I'd suggest whatever variation you did for your body on the first side, I would go this side. But having said that, we're not made evenly on both sides. So maybe this side wants more of a release. Who knows? I don't, I don't think there are any rules. Uh -huh. You know, I know there aren't rules. This practice is about following your intuition. About listening to our communication from our vessel. And it's not in words or thoughts. Come back up. Allow the spine to come back to neutral. And guess where we are going on our pose with? Reverse table, feet, hands in a space that we can lift our hips. You may need to adjust up there. Once here, visit the foundation through both hands, the foundation through both feet, draw the belly in, lift the hips up, believe we are light as a feather and spread out the front of the shoulders away from your heart. Stay if you can. And then come back down. Tuck the ankles under, find the mat with the wrists and the other way. Step back one leg at a time. Up. And we're gonna do a variation here. So bear with me, I was, I, variation of, it's a weird kind of pigeon. So, uh, Gail, if anybody is not comfortable with knee stuff, why don't you just come down to child's pose or ruddy duck or something, enjoy your space. It won't be long. We're all, it is restorative. It's a closed up posture. So let's just take it a little easier. We're come to our left knee or left shin, whatever you want. Okay. Just place, bring your right knee forward and have it on an angle. Okay. But just offer the top of the foot and the front of the shin in. Okay. It's not hanging out on the side of your leg. Do that. Then, yeah, resets. You're going to probably have to come to your hands. I wish we all had blocks here. Okay, now bring your attention to the back leg. I'm pressing in the back top of the foot to lift my kneecap so that I can find a nice placement for the kneecap, which point the toes of the left foot turn under. You still need to find, you know, how much flexion you want in the ankle. Keep pressing down. Let's see if you can come off the floor. Open up the left shin. Balance, balance, balance. Maybe this will happen, but that's kind of intense. You just keep rolling this right heel away from your groin. It doesn't want to sink to the floor. 
focus on that left hip. We won't stay long. If you're in child's pose, just enjoy it. We'll all meet you there in a second. We won't stay too long. Plant down. Release that left foot. Come back. Do it on the other side. Left shin. Right. Toes under of the right. Foot, really get that pressure, the top of the back foot. And so I'm longer, this one's not gonna work as well. Hmm. There's a lot of weird work going on. So primary focus, this inside of the right hip, if you wanna extend the arms up, we work there in the balance. Stretch the toes, there's a lot involved in this. Down, soften, release, and take the knees wide. If you're already in child's pose, just take your knees wide. Come down, we'll just come to elbows beneath the shoulders to start, allow the softening to happen. Stretch out. Pull up, take the knees in. We'll just find that tabletop position one more time. Take hands to knees, knees to hands. Draw that crown and the tailbone up to the sky. Stretch out the front body. Do the opposite for cat. There's these massive tilts, spinal undulations. Inhale, chest broad, shoulder caps wide. Press in, scoop the belly and take that Oh, back opening. One more round in and out. Good. And neutral. Downward dog. Just a breath or two. And then we can step through. Support ourselves coming down just the forearms. Soften the lower back in, let it sink into the mat. Spread the shoulder blades from the spine and come to the back of the head and then realign into constructive rest, whatever feels good. Arms out to some place so that you don't fall, you roll onto them. Bring your knees up. And we'll come over to the right side. Hi, Timmy. Oh dear. Hi, how did you get in here? I had it barricaded. Oh. Just a lovely, rich final supine stretch. And then come back to center, reposition however you want to. Legs up and over to the left. Stretching out the upper right rib cage, the shoulder blade into the ground. And then come back up and then reset. And you can just take your time coming into Shavasana, allowing the legs to sort of settle out and the arms to come back to the ground supported and just have a moment to just maybe take stock of the sensation, how we're now, how we opened our practice, how we're stealing our practice now, the difference and just letting now the back, the front body to completely soften down, sort of just puddle. So really honoring the fluid body and letting those exhalations just give us a space to close our practice, to really have this, a keen sense of yoke, being incredibly present, incredibly safe. healthy and well.
allow the eyes to remain closed and the softness to stay present and just begin that passage back, focusing now on the inhalations and how they fill, rejuvenate, revitalize, and reconstitute. At some point, you probably start to notice the ground, that parts of the body that's resting on the ground or the feeling the air around us or bringing in the noises in our space, allowing. And that's usually a sign that Right, just to move our fingers, maybe our toes, and come up to sitting when in a gentle manner, just to close our practice. Just take this moment, maybe to lift the corners of the mouth. Soak in these final moments of this union and this feeling of yoke, of nothing else, nothing else existing but all of our bodies, energy, physical, emotional, spiritual. And we'll just bring our hands to the heart. And I'd like to be in gratitude. All is well. Namaste.